quick tutorial on textures and the use of textures. I quite like to use this sort of light to medium grey background. It's just a paper background in the studio. Um, professional model Ayla there in her beautiful um, pose. And um, as it is, it's not bad, but it's not going to go anywhere in competition, I don't think. Um, and maybe one of the ways you could lift it is with the use of textures. So I'm just going to show you um, how you would go about adding a texture to the likes of this image. Um, best way to add a texture is to go File, Place Embedded, and then uh, navigate your way to where you have your texture texture. Now this is in landscape orientation. It would have been better if I had it in uh, upright orientation, but I'm just going to hold the shift key and drag it up, and drag it down. And if I hold the alt key um, as I drag it out, I can get something like that. So I'm just going to hit OK on that. So at the moment all you're seeing is the grey texture. <clears throat> it's over the entire image and if I turn it off and on you can see the image is hidden underneath. So if I change the blend mode, typically with textures it's one of uh, overlay, soft light, hard light or vivid light and it depends on the density of your texture as well as the density um, and luminosity of your grey paper. So I'm going to probably go with, um, let me see, I'll go with either overlay or soft light. I'll go with overlay because it's a wee bit more visible on this. Now at the moment obviously the texture goes completely over the subject as well and normally I wouldn't like it on skin tones. So your choice is either to simply uh, click on the mask tool B for brush, um, X to make black my foreground colour and um, at the moment I use the uh, shift left square bracket key to make my brush um, harder or softer so I, I've now got the softest brush possible. If I go shift right bracket key it's now 25% hard, shift right bracket key again it's now 50%, shift again it's now 75 you can check that by going up there. So hardness is 75. So if I go shift, left square bracket, left square bracket, I know I'm at hardness naught. I don't need to go up there and drag that to uh, to naught and check it. All I need to do is go shift, left square bracket key until I can't go any further. So B, um, naught, with a soft edge brush allows me to uh, paint over uh, Ayla. Um, my screen has gone a bit mad here as I'm painting. I don't know what happened there, but however. So you get the idea then you just paint with uh, black on the white mask on areas where you don't want the texture to, uh, to come into play. Okay, I'm not going to keep doing that. I'm just going to drag that mask to the bin. I want to show you another way that you can do it. Um, if I turn off the texture layer and click on the bottom layer, hit Command-0 to make it fit the screen, I can go to something like Select Color Range and um, I can, you can see the settings I've got here. I'll change the fuzziness to about uh, 35. And uh, if I click somewhere on the grey background, anything that appears white here is now selected. So I hold the shift key and I click my way around the grey background until I'm fairly sure that most of the background is selected. As you can see, it, it, it is. So I'm just going to click OK on that. Now, it has also selected parts of the chair and parts of Ayla's skirt, and obviously the colour of Ayla's skirt is quite similar to the grey background. Um, it has also selected part of the shadow on the floor, which I don't want. So if I hit the letter Q, that brings me into quick mask mode, and I can then go B for brush, not for 100% opacity. I'm a great man for using all these keyboard shortcuts. Why would you go up there and wang that slider? Uh, up and down etc when you just simply press a number not for 100% opacity <clears throat> so I need to be painting in black here so X to make uh, black my foreground colour and I'm painting at 100% opacity and uh, anywhere that I paint over now is being deselected uh, 
and um, I definitely want to paint out oops uh, X command Z undo that so I need to be painting uh, in black sorry white on this part because it is selected I'll just go over that wee bit of the chair So I'm painting in um, in white to add to the selection and black to take away from the selection. Um, on the skirt, um, I'm going to paint at about 30% opacity. Now I'll paint a knot over the top of the waistband and then I'll just paint at about 30% opacity to allow in other words, 70% of the texture to come through on the skirt because I like the skirt being close to the colour of the background. I think it might be a, a cool effect to have some of the texture appearing over the uh, over the skirt. So I then hit the letter Q again. And you can see the bits that are partially selected here. Um, if I now click on turn on the mask tool or the texture layer and then just click on the mask, um, I have immediately now, um, so if we turn it off and on, you can see then you don't have to bother painting over Ayla's legs or face or hands, etc., because the quick selection tool has allowed you to keep the. Uh, texture there just applying over those areas that were selected and if we click alt and hold on the mask tool you can see if you thought there was too much coming through on the skirt you just simply uh, B for brush and I'll paint it say 20% opacity and I'm now just basically killing some of that texture showing through on that area um, some people like a little bit of the uh, texture to come through over skin and clothing etc. If that is the case, Alt and click on the mask tool, B for brush and X to make white my foreground colour and if I paint a say a low opacity like 10% so I hit number 1 so rather than wanging that slider to um, to well, from 100% down to 10%, you just press the letter, the number one, and you're automatically at 10%. So I'm now painting with white at 10% opacity over black. So it is just basically allowing what 10% of the texture to come through. If I paint over it again, I'm allowing another 10% of the texture to come through. So we've gone from a very dark pure black now to what I would call a matte black. So we're allowing some of the texture to come through. Now, some of you might say, why did I use place embedded for the texture rather than simply, you know, pasting it onto the top of the layer? The reason is whenever you use place embedded, it comes in as a smart object. So if I want to do a few tricks, like for instance, change the hue or saturation, image adjustments, hue saturation, and uh, we'll bring the saturation up, we'll change the hue. You can basically make it, um, you, you get a better idea when you turn the saturation up, uh, what the, the uh, background changes, you know, the change to the saturation or hue. So you can also play with the lightness of it or the darkness of it. So um, I'm gonna go, um, just say minus two or three on that, click OK, and you'll see now it's applied as a smart filter uh, on the texture layer. Um, so if you think, oh, I wish I'd gone more bluey, you can go back in again and change it. Um, other things that you can do, for instance, filter blur, um, the likes of uh, radial blur. So you can use either spin or zoom. We'll use zoom for this one. So if I change the position of the center of the zoom, I'm going to position it sort of for um, Ayla's head there and say we'll go um, five on that and click OK. We've now got this uh, radial blur. So there I can turn off and on the radial blur. So it's actually quite subtle there when it does come in. It's quite slow because it's a... So 
Um, you can see it now, this is, um, zoom blur coming in. And if, for instance, you only wanted that around the edge of the frame, you can just click on that mask and um, do the legs of a gradient. Uh, so I've got from black to white selected, black to white, and I'm going to choose the uh, radial gradient and click on the centre of Ayla's body and just drag it out to there. And you can see on the mask now um, where it's gone. If I wanted it to go out further, I'm removing it there. So, uh, very simple use of textures. Now, let's say I was happy with that texture and where it is and the effects, etc. Um, I can just simply go Shift Alt Command E, which keeps all the layers below, but f you know gives me a new layer with everything in it on the above, and that's where I can refine it now with the likes of um, applying a vignette. So my method for applying a vignette is to draw it a marquee, and I then go Select Inverse. Select, Modify, Feather, and I type in something like 450 pixels. I then go Command-C to copy, Command-J for a new layer, um, and uh, Command-L for levels. I then double-click on this and go Shift, Down, Down, and press OK on that. And whenever you turn it off and on, there is your nice vignette. If you want it at 70%, rather than wanging that slider over there, just go V7, and the opacity is now 70%. You've taken a third off. If you're happy with that, you can simply then merge down. Um, last finishing touch for me would be the likes of Nick Software. Command J for a new layer. Filter, Nick Software, Color FX Pro. and darken light and center. So this allows you to place the center and uh, I, mean, I know we've already done the, vign the darkening vignette but this is a nice finishing touch. Um, place center is the key so I'm going to place the center rather than being in the center of the image I'm just going to place the center of interest basically as there. Click OK and you'll see the before and after on this. So before, after, you're using brightness values to bring the viewer in to where you want them to be. So if it's too much at 100%, V5, 50%, does it still do what you want it to do? Yes, it does. If you're happy with that, I would simply flatten image. And uh, my sharpening method, um, this was a raw file on sharpen, so Command J. Um, filter, Nick software, output sharpener and I change it from the default of display to inkjet auto luster and I tell it that the resolution of my printer is 2400 by 2400 it doesn't matter whether you're printing or whether you don't even own a printer or what the, the resolution of it is just make it read 2400 by 2400 and don't click anything else that's it done um, it is perfect sharpening. So to see sharpening you have to be at 100%. We are at 100%. So just turn it off and on and you can see the lovely sharpening that has come in there. So flatten image and file save. And that will now change from a CR2 file to an edited TIFF file in Photoshop or in Lightroom. So it's now saved in Lightroom. When I go back into Lightroom there is the edit TIFF file. So we've gone from the raw file, which is that one. If I hit the letter M, that allows me to compare L for lights off. And we've gone from this starting point to that finishing point. So this one is, you know, what I would call bog standard uh, studio portrait model on a chair. This one, just by the use of a texture and the zoom and, you know, a wee bit of um, vignetting, etc., just would stand a better chance of doing something in competition.